When it comes to iconic Second World War aircraft, the first thing that a British person thinks of has to be the magnificent Spitfire, the spectacular Hurricane and the devastating Lancaster Bomber. But when we think of iconic Cold War aircraft, the first thing that hits your mind is the thought of the beastly and incredible Vulcan Bomber. When I was younger, I remember visiting air shows and seeing the final Vulcan flying, its unmistakable wing shape and size dominating the skyline whilst roaring past. In this video we look at the tragic story of Vulcan VX770, which crashed horrifically in 1958 at an air show in Nottinghamshire killing a number of crew on board, as well as a number of crew on the ground. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. <laughs> The Avro Vulcan was a high altitude strategic bomber which was operated by the Royal Air Force or the RAF from 1956 to 1984. The Vulcan belongs to the family of V bombers that were produced and is considered the most technically advanced of the three. The V bombers were made up of the Avro Vulcan, the Vickers Valiant and the Hanley Page Victor. Combined they made up the nuclear strike force that the British would have used should they have needed to deliver a nuclear attack during the Cold War. The V-bombers had a number of shared characteristics, but the main point of them was that they were capable of dropping nuclear weapons, similarly to the American B-52 Stratofortress. Throughout the 1960s, every RAF airbase maintained at least two V-bombers loaded with nuclear weapons on standby, ready to take off on four minutes notice. The Vulcan was first delivered to the RAF in 1956 in its B-1 form, and the improved and tweaked B-2 entered service in 1960. The B-2 featured more powerful engines and a larger wing and an improved electrical system and electronic countermeasures. Many of the Vulcans were modified to accept the Blue Steel missile. This was an air-to-surface missile powered by liquid-fueled Stentor rocket motors. It could travel at around Mach 1.6 and would speed up to possibly Mach 3 as it approached a target. It had an approximate range of 200 miles and was designed to be the main weapon carried by the V-bombers. Blue Steel was 35 feet long, and originally a 200 kiloton fission warhead was planned, but this was later changed to a thermonuclear warhead that had a yield of 1 megaton. If it was used, it would have caused extreme amounts of nuclear damage. When it was clear that the Soviet Union could take down high-flying aircraft, the V-bombers were changed to attack with low-level attacks, and training was made for this change. Today though, we're going to look specifically at one Vulcan, VX-770. It was one-off if not the first prototype Vulcan. It was one of the B-1 models that had been flying for a number of years, first taking flight on the 30th of August 1952 in its gloss white colour. On Saturday the 20th of September 1958 though, tragedy would strike this iconic aircraft. It was Battle of Britain Day in England, commemorating the infamous defeat of the Luftwaffe at the hands of the RAF, and many RAF stations threw open their doors for an open day. The Second World War was still relatively fresh in the minds of many people, and there was one of these open days at RAF Syerston in Nottinghamshire in England. Lots of the public were visiting, looking around many static displays, as well as watching various flypaths of well-known aircraft. At around 12.45pm, it was announced over the tannoy that an extra item had been arranged to do a special fly past. A Vulcan bomber VX-770 had been stationed nearby at Hucknall, and was fitted with the new Rolls-Royce Conway engines, and it was arranged it would do a low fly past at around 5 to 1. This must have been extremely exciting for the spectators that day, catching a glimpse of the new and colossal Vulcan, one of the aircraft that would keep England safe from nuclear attack. On board VX-770 was a crew of three Rolls-Royce crew, and one member of the Royal Air Force, the Navigator. The purpose of the flight was to test the newly fitted Conway engines, but with the request to do a fly pass to RAF Syerston, if time would allow. On board were Captain K.R. Sturt, 2nd Pilot R.W. Ford, Navigator Flight Lieutenant R.M. Parrott, and Flight Engineer W.E. Hawkins. The fly pass would be the second flight the Vulcan would make that day, taking off from Hucknall at around 11.20, 
completing the trials in the sortie, and the ETA for the fly pass would be around 12.55pm. At around 12.46, pilot K.R. Sturt called Hucknall for clearance to do a low fly pass, which was approved, and then he turned towards RAF Syaston, with his ETA still 12.55. Captain Sturt had been flying since 1951, and was classed as an above average pilot. He had over 1600 flight hours, with almost 92 of these in the Vulcan VX770. He was a capable and careful pilot. He had been briefed previously by Mr. Hayworth, Rolls Royce chief test pilot on his duties, and he was to complete the same manoeuvres that he had completed two weeks earlier at the Farnborough Air Show. At 12.50 pm, VX770 called Syston Command Tower to say it was approaching from the west, and the Vulcan was told that the airfield was clear until 1 o'clock. At 12.57 pm, the Vulcan approached RAF Syston with the crowd watching from the west, and commenced to run up the main runway at an approximate height of 80 feet and an estimated speed of 350 knots. All seemed fine until the Vulcan started a shallow climb and began to roll starboard, then tragedy would strike. At this point, a kink was seen to appear in the leading edge of the starboard wing, and it began to break up. The wing then became encapsulated in a cloud of fuel vapour and was seen to have broken up to the starboard wheel well. The aircraft was in serious trouble, breaking up in front of a horrified crowd. The aircraft then began a shallow dive with a roll to port, shedding the vertical fin, and at this point the starboard wing was now completely on fire. VX-770 then continued to roll to port, with its nose coming up vertical, and a fire was now breaking up on the port wing. The aircraft was then obscured in a huge plume of flames, but reappeared with its nose pointing down. VX-770 would then continue at this altitude before striking the ground to devastating effect, killing every one of the crew members on board. Upon its crash with the ground, the port wing destroyed a fire and rescue Land Rover which was parked, as well as the runway controller's caravan, killing three RAF servicemen and seriously injuring another. Those on the ground killed were Sergeant E.D. Simpson, Sergeant C. Hansen and S.A.C. Tonks. Allegedly one of the aircrew's body was found having smashed through the perimeter fence and was burning in a local field. An official investigation was launched into the crash, and it was found that from the first indication of structural failure to the time the aircraft crashed into the ground was just 6 seconds. It was found that the flight was properly authorised, the pilot's briefing was adequate, the pilot was also competent, the aircraft was serviceable for the flight, and also that the weather was fine. It was decided that the primary cause of the accident was structural failure to the aircraft's main spar, which was confirmed by photographs and video. The reason for the failure wasn't really determined by the Board of Inquiry, however it was suggested that the pilot performing the planned aerobatic display exceeded the prototype Vulcan's brief speed and turning rate limits. It has also been suggested that the maintenance crew failed to inspect the aircraft properly for any known issues with stress damage to VX-770's leading edges and structural ribs, which had been seen in other prototypes flown earlier. The crowd who entered RAF Syaston that day for the Open Day, celebrating the Battle of Britain, witnessed a tragedy when they should have been celebrating a valiant and defiant victory against the Nazis and the Luftwaffe. The accident that took place involving the iconic Vulcan, and specifically VX-770, was a tragic event that led to the deaths of seven people overall. It would be a day that those witnesses would never forget. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.